Moaz Mustafa is a senior political advisor for Coalition for a Democratic Syria. Moaz, first of all, what do you make of the ISIL attack on this Palestinian camp in Syria? Um, it's definitely a very disturbing trend, and it's sort of added to the misery that the, the camp is already experiencing. The, the Palestinian camp has been under siege by the regime for, for many years now in, in some of the most horrific pictures that tell the sort of uh, the, the, the sort of horrible situation that they're in have come out from the camp before. And now ISIL coming in leaves the, the factions inside the camp and the, and the people there to fight both against the regime uh, and deal with this horrible siege and as well at the same time fight against uh, this new threat that's come from, from Hajar al-Aswad from the south. And in addition to trying to deal with the siege, uh, aid is not getting in in part because aid workers have been reportedly fired upon. Uh, how common or frequent is that, particularly in the war in Syria? Unfortunately, it's been it's been the norm in, in the past. Uh, it's been now we're in our fifth year in the war in Syria, and the regime specifically has systematically targeted medical workers and hospitals and humanitarian workers in general. We have, according to a recent uh, Physicians for Human Rights uh, report, 97 percent of the doctors that and, and medical workers that have been killed have been killed by the Assad regime. About 88 percent of the hospitals that have been destroyed in the country have has been also targets of the Assad regime. So unfortunately, this continues not just in areas like Yarmouk camp in the besieged areas around Damascus, but also in vast areas in the north, in Idlib, Aleppo, and other areas. And it's, it's really a horrible uh, norm now in this conflict. You mentioned that so much of this is being carried out by the Assad regime. Is that in part because the Assad regime is trying to target fighters or armed groups who happen to be taking up in areas where there are a lot of civilians, including aid workers? Um, the fact is that the Assad regime, in, in terms of its bombardment of civilian areas and besieged areas, has used it not necessarily to find military targets, but more so in order to, to sort of uh, take retribution against entire uh, areas that have risen up against it or not been, you know, 100% loyal to the regime itself. The reason that, for example, the Yarmouk camp has been under besiegement for, for so long has, has been that, as well as eastern Ghouta, among other places. But if you look, especially in Idlib and Aleppo and, and Deir Zor and other places, He's dropping barrel bombs, some laced with chlorine gas, uh, only weeks after a UN Security Council resolution had called for, for the end of that, and that was unanimous, unanimously adopted, including by, uh, by the Russians. And unfortunately, the fact that there is no consequences for these actions, uh, it has allowed sort of a, a blank check for the regime to continue these attacks across the board. Uh, and I think it's punishment uh, in general of entire populations. And given the punishment being inflicted by the Assad regime, as well as the crackdown that we saw in the piece by ISIL, is there anything that Western power, short of a, a military intervention, can do to try to help specifically the aid workers who are trying to get in and help those 18,000 people who are stuck in the Arma camp? Um, I think the international community if it was to put up the pressure uh, against the Assad regime, uh, even you know, short of armed intervention, it can have a bigger difference. Uh, and when it comes to the massive areas in the north, I think it's very important for, for a protected zone to be established.